everybody. I'm Nina Soden, the redheaded author, urban fantasy author of the Sector C series and the Blood Angel series. And my guest today is Leanne Carmen. She is the author of the Investigation Duo series. After using DNA testing to solve her own mystery, she became passionate about helping others and writing stories about buried secrets. She takes it up a notch for Jules and Becky, whose cases lead them down a much darker and dangerous path. Her DVR is filled with shows from the ID channel, which she tries to reassure her boyfriend are merely for book research. Her goal is to write novels that keep mystery lovers guessing. And if her Google search ever comes into question, she would be grateful for her readers if they would vouch for her. I think all of us authors feel that way, especially if we have killed any of our characters. All right. Thank you so much, Leanne, for joining me today and doing this interview. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for having me. All right. If you are a mystery lover, then you definitely want to check out her books. We will be talking about them shortly. But if you want a chance to win an autographed copy of her first book, which is Where the Truth Hides, go ahead and show us that cover. It is beautiful. Backwards, if you would like, right? Yeah. No, no, it's not backwards. It's good. Oh, it looks backwards for me. Um, if you would like a chance, it doesn't look backwards for me, but we'll see what it is Perfect. when it actually goes online. If you want a chance to read <laughs> this book for free, if you would like an autographed copy, like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment below. You have to comment below or we won't know you've entered the drawing. So comment below and you'll have a chance to win. The winner will be announced one week from the date that this video posts. All right, let's jump right in. Tell me how your own mystery had inspired this book and how it carries through and and why are you so fascinated with this kind of stuff um probably about five years ago maybe four or five years ago um my son's father had been adopted hmm. and he, he passed away um but it was always a really big deal that he was adopted and he always wanted to know where he came from. And it was a little bit before DNA had become, I think, as mainstream as it is today. So he really went the old fashioned way to try to find his answers and they really never came to fruition. Mm. Um, so after he passed away, we decided, my son and I, to do my son's DNA. I did mine too, but we did my son's DNA to see if we could find his birth family. And we did, both sides. Wow. Uh, we found relatives that live in Florida, which is where I'm from. Um, and it, it, I became obsessed. I just became obsessed because it's, it's a big puzzle, you know, solving a DNA mystery is like a big puzzle and you're trying to put all these matches together and where they could fit in. And we had one match on ancestry that we could not figure out, or I could not figure out where she fit in and it was driving me crazy. And then, um, finally I found out she was part of a little bit of a secret that she didn't even know. Um, and I said to her, she called me one time and I said, listen, I, I don't want to upset your apple cart, but I know that when I solve my mystery, I'm accidentally going to solve yours. So it's up to you whether you want to know what I find. And so she said, yes. And we've become friendly. Um, you know, we've become friendly now. And then there was another mystery. So there was a mystery on the mo birth mother's mother's side and the birth mother's father's side. They both had a little bit of an indiscretion on both sides. Okay. <laughs> Um, so that did start me thinking about, you know, there's different Facebook groups you can join that are DNA related and the stories that come out of those sites. I kept thinking there's a series in here. There's an endless amount of stories in here. And that's what got my wheels turning. I've always wanted to write novels and that's what started, you know, started the ball running for me. So that's where it came from originally. But, and I still help other people, uh, to solve their mysteries too. Okay, very cool. So can you tell us where the truth hides? Where does the truth hide? No, read us the blurb on the back of your book to give us a little bit more intrigue. Well, it hides in your DNA, so keep that in mind. Hmm. Um, so it says, Becky Morgan has a life most women would envy until a car accident lands her in the hospital. She insists she's fine, but it quickly becomes clear she's changed. She's forgetful, paranoid, short-tempered. 
Her husband wants to write off her change in personality to the IVF hormones she take, she's taking in an attempt to get pregnant. Becky's best friend, Jules Dalton, is a gorgeous single woman with a habit of sabotaging relationships. I think we all know that. <laughs> when Jules loses the man who could have been the one, she confronts the realization that being adopted at birth is contributing to her trust issues. She's obsessed with finding out why she was given up and turns to DNA testing in hopes her matches will lead to her birth parents. As Jules dives into her DNA results, <clears throat> results, Becky's life soon becomes one she simply doesn't recognize. Those closest to her are accusing her of things she simply can't explain or remember. She's terrified of losing everything, her career, her marriage, and her dream of becoming a mother. Desperate to put the pieces of her shattered life back together, Becky needs her best friend more than ever. What she doesn't realize is that Jules knows something that could explain everything. Becky has a dark past she's unaware of, a darkness that's coming for her. It could also get her killed. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. All right. So book one is just the beginning of a series. Does the book, but does book two follow the same characters? It does. So Jules and Becky will go on in book two. So in book two, um, really where the truth hides is sort of a prequel to the series. So in The Dark Inheritance, which is book two, um, Jules and Becky taking what they've learned about DNA and what it can mean, they open a detective agency oh. and they start, to, they start to solve family mysteries. And so they're a bit of DNA and a bit of old fashioned detective work. Um, and they are deeper and darker than most of the secrets I came across <laughs> and a little more dangerous. Um, and so that's where book two will take you is with them on their first big case as they open up their detective agency. Now this is, solely our world correct it's not fantasy or no, urban no. fantasy okay so i don't know how to world. write fantasy I, I don't I, i'm not good at that you know like when i read it i was like there's not there's no wizards in here there's no <laughs> there's no unicorns there's it's just straight up fiction yeah, yeah, yeah contemporary fiction yep okay and it would you consider it suspense or just mystery or you know that's funny that you asked that because definitely i consider the first one a domestic suspense Okay. And then I think it does go into the mystery genre a little bit more starting in book two. You know, they open the detective agency, yep. but there's definitely a bit of suspense as to what's happening and how it unfolds. So I, I, I say it's a little bit of both, although I think the first one is a little bit more psychological thriller, domestic suspense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what authors do you feel have influenced your writing? Who do you read? What do you um, kind of go to over and over? Is this your genre that you read as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. what authors do you read the most and who influences your writing? Um, I don't know if I would say I have specific authors, although there's certain ones I like. Lisa Jewell I like. Um, Lisa Gardner I like. You know, any of the top genre books that are big you know I belong to a bunch of Facebook Facebook groups and if everybody's reading something then I want to read it yeah. even if they don't like it I want to know why they don't like it and I want to form my own opinion like yeah. um I think if you're in the suspense world or the thriller world at all Verity I don't know if you've read that but mm -hmm. that is like a hot topic on every one of these sites you either loved it or you hated it and I did loved you it. love it okay I loved it so okay. that was one of my favorite books um of the summer I think I read it over the summer. Um, you know, I, I try every so often to venture out into something that's not my normal genre. And I just, I don't know, I have a hard time getting through it, I think. And yeah. I don't, I, I don't uh, have the accolades that most people do, but sometimes I have to know what everybody's talking about. So I go and read it. I understand that. I, I'm a huge reader and I do divide, you know, I, I do kind of emerge from my own genre from time to time and just Kind of get in those zones where that's all I read, and sometimes right. I'm in a zone where I don't read my genre at all. It's just and what is your genre? Urban fantasy. Okay. Okay. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your writing process. What does that look like from start concept to finish publication? Um. First, my brain overloads, <laughs> as I'm sure you understand that. Yeah. Um, you know, and right now there's two ideas that are clunking around in there that have both been in there for a while. So one is book three in the series okay. and the other one is a non-related book 
that has been in my head for a while. When I, when I worked full time, I used to take long car trips. I traveled a lot for work and they would just spin in my head while mm -hmm. I was driving. And, you know, four hours later, I'd have a couple chapters written in my head or a, an idea. So I, I basically have a good idea of where I wanted to start, where I wanted to end and kind of the path I wanted to take in the beginning. As I'm sure you probably noticed too, unless you're a complete outliner, <laughs> uh, that when you sit down at the computer, things just happen that you didn't even expect. And I remember when I was writing The Dark Inheritance, I went, oh, look what happened. And I was like, I made that happen, but it just comes out onto the screen and you're kind of waiting to see what happens next, just like the readers are, which I think is so fascinating. Absolutely, I agree. So there has been so many times when I've been, oh, I think I know where this is going. And right. then I write the chapter, I went, I'm like, well, okay, well, that's where it went. <laughs> right, I, right, right. I kind of just allow my characters to take me where they want to go. And I think right. that I felt like I was alone in that for so long, but talking to more and more authors, a lot of authors do that. A lot of authors know that, okay, I may even have an outline. Right. But that doesn't mean that's where the story is going to end or that's where the story is going to go. The only thing I think is different when you have a mystery or a suspense is you have to sort of connect all the dots. Yeah. So you have to have an idea of how you're going to get from the mystery or the what's going on to the ending of what that is. Yeah. And, you know, you can't really pull things out of nowhere. So you have to, t you know, you have to have certain ideas of how you're going to tap on all those whether they're red herrings or whether they're clues, you know, we're going to leave all those breadcrumbs. You have to have a little bit of an idea to make sure that it's all going to make sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think that if you don't have that sort of idea, especially with a mystery, pe the reader's going to leave going, wow, there were so many holes. <laughs> right, right, right. There were so many holes. So that's, that is good to know. So for you, how long does that take you to write a book? Well, <laughs> I will say the first, my debut novel, which was Where the Truth Hides, that really was a very long process. Okay. Um, it was a big learning curve. And I went through several editors, you know, as I was learning. And I was not willing to put it out until I knew that it could stand a lot alongside something that was traditionally published and yeah. hold its own. Yeah. And that was really important to me. So Where the Truth Hides took about three years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. The Dark Inheritance took about three months. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. really fast. Yeah. That's really I was pretty fast. shocked. The first draft came in about two months and I was working full time. And I was just telling someone this morning, I'm like, when I get going, it's like crack. Like all I want to do is work on the book and sit and find out what happens. And yeah. so it went very fast. The second book. Um, yeah. And I have a great editor, so I did find a great editor. So he's a great resource, and we even bounce ideas off before I start writing. Um, he's an author as well, and I feel extremely fortunate that I found him. I wish I would have found him a little sooner. Maybe that three-year process would have been a little shorter. Right. I did go the long way, and I did definitely have some key learnings that I probably wouldn't do again next time. <laughs> I left a little bit of money on the table with some stupid decisions I made. Oh, we've all done <laughs> um, that, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's all a learning process in the beginning. When you don't know what you're doing, you tend to trust people that say they'll help you. And in the end, you know, sometimes that doesn't work out. I was okay with it because, like I said, I was not okay with putting it out until I felt like it was as good as it could possibly be. I knew I was only going to get one chance to make a first impression. Right. And Absolutely. so I have no regrets with the final version that got published. Um, so I'm glad that it didn't work out earlier and I didn't publish an earlier version because I think – you know, things are meant to be. And I think the editor that I found, we were meant to be a team. So I do think he was worth waiting for. That's awesome. Um, Cause I was gonna ask you about your editing process. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump ahead and okay. ask you this. You said that you wanted it to stand alone against a traditionally published. So that mm -hmm. means you are indie, yes? Correct, yep. Why did you decide to go that route as opposed to the traditional publishing route? Um. A couple of a couple of reasons. So the one that I'm working on now, which is unrelated to the series, I do want to traditionally publish, and I think it's a very unique idea that I've never seen before, and okay. I think it has a great hook. 
which I'm probably not going to mention here because I don't want anybody to steal my idea. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so that one that I'm working on, I definitely will try to go the traditional route. When I started thinking about, you know, I knew that this had taken me three years to write and I just started thinking about the DNA stuff. And I really feel like DNA is becoming more and more, um, popular, more and more mainstream, you know, you'll see it on 48 hours or 2020 or Dateline, all those kinds of shows, you know, now they're using it to solve cold cases. And I just really felt like the whole process to maybe find an agent and a publisher and get out into the world was several years, at least a couple of years. And I thought by then someone will have beat me to it. Okay. And so that's why with the DNA stuff, I decided to go out on my own. And I thought as a series, that would just be easy to keep up with and keep publishing on my own schedule. And you also said that you were working full time when you wrote the second book, but you aren't anymore. Is that correct? Correct. Did you leave your job to become a full time writer? Not exactly. So I work in corporate America and I've been at my job for 24 years. Okay. And they were going through, they are going through a major restructure. And if you've been in the corporate world, you know, restructure means people are going to lose jobs. And they offered out a voluntary separation package. And so it basically meant that if you chose the voluntary separation package, you got severance package A. And if you waited to see if you were involuntarily separated, you got severance package B. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I think things happen for a reason. And it was just, I've been there 24 years. So my severance package was pretty nice. Yeah. And I think if you told any writer they could sit home for more than a year and get paid, to just sit and write for a while. I don't know too many people who would turn that down. No, I'm not. (laughs) Absolutely not. I'm waiting for that day that somebody will tell me that. Just sit at home and write. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it it might be the dumbest thing I've ever done. I don't know. We'll see. Um, And I'm not under any illusions that I'm going to make the same kind of money. And then I know I'm going to have to eventually go back into the working world. But for a little while, it's really nice to enjoy and you know, be able to take some of those writing courses or, you know, some of those classes and training stuff that I've, you know, I've never really had time to do. Yeah. The biggest, you know, the, the writing now seems almost the easy part. It's the marketing. That's the hardest part. Mm, Amen, I, sister, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's the worst. I mean, you want to be, you're, you're an author. You want to be in front of your computer. You want to be writing. You want to be creative. And then you have to, I mean, if you don't market it, nobody sees it, nobody buys it, nobody reads it. And then where are you? So right. yeah. And it's sad yeah. because I, I have a marketing background. That's what I did for 24 years. <laughs> but, but it's different, right? Yes. Marketing one, a book, than whatever it was you were marketing before. And marketing Coca-Cola. Your, Coca-Cola. Uh, well, that just sells itself. <laughs> sells itself. Right. Sells itself. Very different. The, you know, one of the top trademarks in the world versus my little tiny book. <laughs> yeah. Leanne Carmen's book brought to you by right. Coca-Cola. Not really. Well, you okay. will notice if you ever read my books, my characters never drink any competitive product. Do they, they not? only drink Coke products. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, that markets itself. It's different yeah. when you're marketing a book that nobody has heard of or you're marketing yourself. Right. As an yes, author, that's different. what you're doing. You're marketing yourself. You're mm-hmm. hoping that the readers will like you and therefore they will buy your book and they will like your book right. or they will find your book. They will like their book, your book enough to like you to want to read everything else you put out. Correct. Right. It's not yeah. the same. It's hard. No, <laughs> it's hard. It's definitely not hard. <laughs> it's not, not fun. I don't enjoy the marketing process either, but you know, it's better than the editing process to me. I don't so, the editing. I, you know, I have a love hate relationship with my editor. I okay. love to hate them because if I hate them, it means they have marked it all up and it's going to be so much better in the end. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. I want to know about why writing. I mean, I know you have this mystery and then you solve the mystery, but, but why turn that into art? Why turn that into a book? What drives um, you to do that? I've always been a big reader. So in my family, when I was little, like going to the Walden bookstore, that was our family outing. My dad was a huge reader. He never went anywhere without a paperback, anywhere. My mother, like as she got older, she lived at the library. I mean, my brother's a huge reader and he's a, and he writes too. He writes for fun, but he's a, you know, he's a writer too. And, you know, 
from the very beginning, I used to have bookshelves full of books and I don't know, this is probably going to date me, but you know, I was big in the Trixie Belden books. Oh yeah, I do. I (laughs) had all the Trixie Belden books and you know, that was a big deal to go to the bookstore and get the latest Trixie Belden book and add another one to my collection. That was a big deal. And so, you know, it's funny. I was talking to my editor the other day and this blew me away probably 25 to 30 years ago, I actually worked in Manhattan in the entertainment business. Okay. A company called William Morris, which has since evolved, but it's a pretty big name. Oh, yeah. And I said, <laughs> I wish I knew all the, I wish I had kept in touch with the literary agents. I'm not going right? to lie. <laughs> I was in the motion picture uh, commercial department for a while, but I said somewhere on one of the old computers in the William Morris office, there was the beginning of a book. And ironically enough, all these years ago, <clears throat> it was about adoption. Now, yeah. I'm not adopted. I hadn't met my husband at that point. I didn't know anyone that was adopted. But 25 to 30 years ago, that's what my book was about. Wow. And I thought, that's so wild that here I am all these years later, still on the same topic. Now, did you remember that when you started this process or did, were you writing it and then remembered it? No, my editor and I were talking the other day and he said, I found this book of short stories that I have, that I had written 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. And he, um, he writes a series with a main character and he said, you know, it's funny because she was in those stories back then. I just didn't know who she was yet, but it was the same kind of character. And I thought, and it just got me thinking, I said, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this book I had started. You know, on my lunch hour, I was writing it. And don't ask me why I quit and didn't take it with me. But, you know, it was a long time ago. But I thought that's I, when I realized, I said, wow, that's so weird that all those years ago, I was on the same topic. And I thought, let me go back to that idea because I could still use that idea in this yeah. series. Just got a little DNA flair now. It's, it's interesting how that kind of stuff kind of carries with us and how our own lives and what we have experienced feeds into yeah. what we write. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I write urban fantasy, have not experienced a vampire yet. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that people I have met haven't influenced the characters that I write. And just like you, what you have experienced in life has influenced what you write. And I think that's true for most writers. Yeah, I've not met a writer who writes fiction that is solely 100% made up fiction has nothing to do with anything anyone or anything that they've done in life and my book is filled with people that are based on real people or at least their personalities are or you know there's certain aspects of their personality that are definitely part of my characters absolutely so speaking of that what have you found through the process of writing that you have either had to take out of your book that you absolutely loved or a scene that you added to your book based on something that happened to you while you were writing? Was there anything like that? Well, the first editor made me take a lot of stuff out of my book. (laughs) You know, when I first started writing, I felt like the reader needed to know everything. And apparently they don't. (laughs) Um, You know, and there were certain things I know that even, even in The Dark Inheritance, my editor would say, well, I don't know if it could really happen that way. And I had to massage and I had, you know, a police officer friend that gave me some input and a paramedic friend who gave me some input. And I'm like, but could it really happen that way? Could it? I mean, not in the real world. It doesn't usually, but could it? And so there was things I definitely had to massage to make that work. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, my animals, I have a house full of pets and my animals make it into my book. So my big orange cat who's sleeping right over here, he made it into the first book. Awesome. And. The, there were scenes where some things happened to him, which please be aware that I would never let anything bad happen to an animal. So if you know me, you know, there's nothing bad going to happen to him. But when I was writing it, I'd have to look over to make sure he was right there because oh. he was missing in the book. And I was like, okay, he's right there. Yeah. And then my, my dog passed away while I was writing uh, the first book. And so there was a scene where Jules has a blind date and the restaurant became Riley's because that was my dog's name. Okay. Wow. So see, our lives do influence mm-hmm. A lot, Absolutely. I think. Yep. So what is your favorite part of writing a book? Mm-hmm. What is uh, being an author? What is, what is your favorite part of that? 
I mean, I think when it starts to take shape, like really take shape, like you and I were talking about, and you're like, oh, that's good, yeah. you know? Um, but I think really it's when you get those messages that someone goes, oh my God, I loved your book. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's so gratifying. Like you put all this time and effort. And I don't think people realize how much you sacrifice and how oh, much yeah. time you give up. And, you know, for me, when I was working, it was nights, it was weekends, it was holidays. It was taking vacation from work to sit in front of my computer. Yeah. Um, so to know that it's appreciated by somebody who's read it, I think that's, you know, and when I was releasing The Dark Inheritance, so many people were like, oh my God, I've been waiting. I'm so excited. And I thought, yeah. oh my God, you're excited. You know, like that's just the nicest part when you realize that you are starting to create these little fans and you're creating this, you know, reader base that wants to read the next one and the next one. And you're, yeah. it's very, grat I think that's the most gratifying that all that time and effort and heart and soul you put on, you know, I say onto the page, but onto your screen, really, you know, yeah. that it's been appreciated and, and someone's enjoying your creative efforts. Yeah. It is literally blood, sweat, and tears that go into a book. And I think that most people don't know. That. And money. <laughs> and money. Whew. Yeah. So much, right? Mm -hmm. People don't and realize, yeah. For a $10 paperback. Like, oh God. If if you ch if authors charge by the hour for their books, nobody would, would read. Right. No one Right. No one would read. I mean, it yep. would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So what can your readers expect from you coming forth? I mean, you've got the first book out, Where the Truth mm -hmm. Hides. You've got the second book out, The Dark Inheritance. What's next? Um, you will see Memory Hunter, which is book number three. So mm -hmm. my guess is that will probably be out by the springtime if I get my button gear. Okay. Um, and then... You know, I don't know what will happen. I am writing another book that's not related to the series that I do want to traditionally publish. So, okay. you know, that will be a work in progress for a while, um, you know, until something comes of that or I decide to publish it myself. We'll see. Okay. Um, but hopefully, you know, I'm not working currently. So I consider this my job. Yeah. I literally come to my desk in my office because I had a home office. I come to my desk in my office just like I came to work the regular way. I sit down by 8.30, I'm in front of my computer, I'm here till at least five in front of my computer. I'm just doing different stuff, but I still kind of follow the same schedule I followed you know, for all these years when I worked. So how often or how long during that eight to five, nine to five job, how, how much writing do you get done on a daily basis? You know, it's just starting for me. I've only been out of my job two and a half weeks. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. Um, or was it three and a half? No, I think it's two and a half weeks. And so it's taken me a while to get everything set up. Yeah. You know, get my printer set up to my personal computer and get my email. I think you and I talked about my calendars and yes. hot mess. Um, you know, and just trying to get myself set up, clean out my office, get the juju right. Um, so I did start working yesterday. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set a goal for a certain number of words per day and kind of you know, make that my goal, but there's other things I want to do some training classes and there's other things I want to do. So, you know, once I get into it, I did, I think you and I, it's like, it's like crack. Like I just want to sit down and I just want to work on my book and I don't want to do anything else. I want to tell my teenager to order from Uber Eats or DoorDash and leave me yeah. alone. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, it becomes very obsessive, you know, yeah. when you're in the middle of writing Absolutely. and for me, you know, I have holiday stuff I have to accomplish. So I've been a little hesitant to get started too much. Cause I know I go down that path and I've got baking to do and shopping to do. And yeah, I've put all of my writing right now on hold until the new year. I've got yeah. so many huge goals, but they're going to have to wait till January. So that's what it is. Yeah. I'll probably come back in. I mean, once the majority of my holiday stuff is done, I'll be back working on this one, but I, I do a lot of baking and people are, the natives are already restless. They're like, <laughs> Where's the rugula? Where is it? Yeah. <laughs> so I got to start baking. So how has COVID affected your writing? Um, has it? Well, indirectly, I think it did because I think even though my company won't say it, I think that was a big part of the restructure maybe. Okay. You know, it hit everybody very hard. And what I did is I, I was in marketing and I worked on what we call marketing assets. And for me, that was everything that was canceled. If you would have told me at any point in my 24 years there that everything I worked on would be canceled, 
I would have thought you were insane. I work on Universal. I work on the Buccaneers. I work on colleges. I work on soccer teams. You know, everything. Wow. NASCAR tracks. I everything. I still say it. See, I still say it like present tense because I think yeah. I still work. I think I'm going back. But you know, every single thing I worked on was canceled. Yeah. And so indirectly, I do believe that influenced a little bit of my decision to decide to leave currently. You know, you just don't know when this is going to get resolved. I will say in my writing, I pretend COVID didn't happen. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not writing COVID into my books. I'm, I'm in my world, in my fantasy world, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely am not going to go down that path of people wearing masks and social distancing and all okay. that. Yeah, I I have no desire to see that Mm -hmm. in a book. We're living it. I don't have any desire to see that. Right, me too. So is there anything else that you would like my viewers to know about your books or about you? I know you are doing a holiday giveaway on your website, Mm -hmm. so we definitely want to mention that. If you can tell them where to go to get into that, into that drawing or that giveaway. Um, But is there anything else you want the viewers to know before we end this? with my uh, questionnaire? Um, I should have been prepared. Um, no, I, I just think, you know, it's funny. I was, I did another podcast and she said, you know, it's amazing to me that your main characters really are women, strong women. And the men are kind of like the supporting characters. She said, was that on purpose? And I said, absolutely. And I love the idea. Yeah. And the first, it was funny because, so Becky in the book is married and she's the one that's going through IVF. You know, I tried to touch on some timely topics that are very, you know, relevant to women. And I went through that a little bit, not to the extreme that Becky in the book goes through, but, you know, Jules was looking for her birth parents. And in the very beginning, the first editor said, well, this is really a love story between Becky and her husband, Brian. I said, well, that's not what I want. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be more about the two best friends because I knew they were going to go on. And I really wanted it to be about this strong female friendship that has Mm -hmm. nothing to do with putting people down or stealing boyfriends or husbands and cheat affairs. Like I didn't want any of that normal, you know, the wife and the husband and the woman who's trying to steal the husband. You know, I didn't want any of that. I wanted it to be about this really bonded friendship between Jules and Becky. And so I did go back to the drawing board and did do some rewrites. And, you know, I think that's where we ended up, but she was right. Like the men really are the supporting characters because it's really about Jules and Becky and moving forward, whatever case they're solving. That's awesome. I love reading strong women. I love reading women who find themselves or come into Mm -hmm. themselves. I think that's excellent. So tell us where can our viewers, your readers, enter into your giveaway. Okay. So if you go to my website, which is leannecarmen.com, um, and it's, show you this so you can figure out how to spell it, <laughs> L-I-A-N-E, which my mother thought would be unique, um, C-A-R-M-E-N.com. Um, I did start yesterday a holiday giveaway. So for 12 days, um, I'm going to post prizes. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you get a raffle ticket. And every day I'm posting the prize and the winning raffle ticket and giving away all sorts of stuff that I think, um, you know, I'm giving away eBooks, I'm giving away paperbacks, I'm giving away Amazon gift cards. I'm even giving away a DNA test. Um, All right. So you definitely need to check out her website. If for nothing else, you need to get her newsletter and I will have links to her website. I will have links to her books. I will have everything that you need to follow her down below in the description of this video. All right, now you're in the hot seat. I end all of my interviews with an homage to James Lipton and I do his Inside the Actor Studio questionnaire. Okay. It is 10 questions. They're short and sweet and thus your answers should be short and sweet. Don't think through it. Just answer what comes to mind. There are absolutely no wrong answers. All right. Question one, what is your favorite word? (laughs) <laughs> my favorite word um oh my god I don't know um words creative. Creative. creative okay what is your least favorite word should I say moist like everybody does oh, <laughs> I don't really want so I, many people I say really that <laughs> yeah okay what turns you on mm, people that are happy 
What turns you off? People that are negative. What sound or noise do you love? The sound of the slot machine at the casino. What sound or noise do you hate? The lawn guys outside. <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? Oh, it's the F word. Okay. Totally. Totally the F word. Although I try not to put them in my books. I try not to put the F word in my books, but, and, and now that I'm not working full time, it has decreased a little bit, <laughs> Nice. but it does, it, it, it does slip out as part of my regular vocabulary. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? A uh, criminologist. What profession would you not want to try? Um, tax attorney. <laughs> Anything with numbers. Okay. And last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gate? Um, here's everybody that's gone before you. They're waiting for you. That's awesome. I love that answer. And it's funny that you asked that because that's the, that's sort of the theme of my book I'm writing right now. So it's ironic that you asked that. Oh, awesome. Well, then I cannot wait to see what comes next with you. All right, everybody. That is the end of the interview. Thank you so much for doing Thanks this for interview me. with me. I'm so happy to have you on. If you would like a chance to win her book, show us that cover again. It is beautiful. All right. So if you want a chance to win an autographed copy, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below to be entered to win. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.